to create cylindrical objects. Okay, so now I'm going to delete away this cube and I'm going to create a curved object. So to do that, I'm going to press Shift A and choose the curve option and choose Bezier. So when you create a Bezier curve, it's going to lie down flat on the surface like this. Right, so I'm going to reset my zoom by pressing on the delete key on the number pad and you'll notice that the curve is actually lying flat on the grid itself so personally, uh, personally I like to draw the curve or adjust the curve to face me in the front view so let's switch to the front view by pressing 1 on the number pad and pressing 5 on the uh, orthographic toggle so now you notice that you see a straight line but when in fact the curve is actually lying down on its side so I'm going to press R followed by X okay, in the X axis and then I'm going to press 9, 0 uh, representing 90 degrees so right now the curve is facing me directly and in order to edit the curve a Bezier curve you have to press the tab key and when you press the tab key you go into the edit mode now you'll notice something interesting about the curve here you'll see these arrow lines and also these red handles All right, so these two points here are the control handles so I can right mouse click to select them and if I press G I can move them and I can change the length by just simply moving my cursor left or right now if I want to select the control vertex of this Bezier curve I simply click on the center here and press G and you can see the entire curve moves same thing for the other side here so if I click on the control handle and I press G to move I can control the curvature of the Bezier curve right so to put the point where I want it I just left mouse click alright to change the properties of the curve for example right now if I were to select the handle and move it around the other side will follow so if you click on the center control vertex and if you press V you'll be given the option to change the handle type for example if I choose vector all right you'll notice that now it has become a straight line okay so currently we can't really see the effect of a vector because we are only adjusting one point so I'm going to show I'm going to show you a command where you can subdivide this into three points so in a Bezier curve two points between two control vertices is considered a segment so I'm going to select this two and then I'm going to press W to bring up the specials and then I'm going to choose the first option that says subdivide so when you subdivide you will create another extra control vertex and because the last handle type I created or adjusted was a, a vector you're going to end up with a straight or hard corner control vertex so let me just change the properties of this vertex by pressing V and I'm going to try to change it to aligned so aligned is the default control handle type and you notice when I move one handle the other handle follows so right now let's change to another type free now when you're in the free mode if you move the uh, the handles right okay right now you notice that both handles are free you can actually move them independently of each other so this is what it means okay so I'm going to select the central vertex again and press V and you can toggle between free and aligned by simply pressing V okay so switching between free and aligned okay so sometimes you need to change the handle values to create the profile that you need okay so what about these lines well these lines represent the normals the normals basically tell you which is the first vertex and which is the last vertex so in this case the arrow lines are pointing in this direction it means that this one is the first vertex and this one is the last vertex and sometimes it's, it can be a little bit uh, annoying to see these uh, lines so uh, I generally uh, turn them off so I press N press N to open up your uh, viewport properties okay and then you can under the curve display you can uncheck normals so you don't see the arrow lines 
Okay, I'm going to leave the handles open because right now I'm going to change this handle to represent a cylindrical object. So right now I'm selecting the control vertex. Okay, and I'm gonna, going to change uh, these, this uh, control handle into automatic. So I'm going to press V and change to automatic. So you notice the color of the handle also changes. And this one, I'm going to change it to automatic as well. So when it is in automatic mode, whenever I move the control vertex, the previous one will automatically shift and change with the direction of the Bezier curve. So this one is the first one. I'm going to put it at the center of the pivot, okay, which is represented by this dot here. So let's just create a simple vast container. So to create an extra section, you just press E to extrude, press E to extrude, and then press E again to extrude. And then I'm going to press E again to extrude inwards. Now this this uh, function is optional because you can actually create a thin one and you can apply some thickness to it later on when you convert it into a polygon. But in order to give your vase or your container some thickness, generally I'll just draw the curve so that it runs inwards like this. Okay, so right now the, the vase control handles are now automatic and if there is a need for you to change the properties, you can press V and change it to either of these uh, control values. Okay, so I changed this one of this uh, control vertex to vector, so I can have more control over the shape of my profile. So right now I'm going to the uh, viewport properties and hide the handles, and you can see this is the profile of the vase. Now I want the bottom here to be a little bit flatter. And I need another extra vertex here. So I'm, I'm going to select one vertex here, shift select this vertex here, press W and choose subdivide. So now I have an extra control vertex to adjust the, the base. So I'm going to turn the handles back on, press V and change this into a vector so that I can have a flat bottom. I'm going to do the same for this one as well and change this into a vector. So now I'm going to hide the handles again and I'm happy with this profile. Okay, so now the shape of my curve is done. I can left mouse or rather middle mouse click and drag to go to my orthographic uh, perspective view. I'm going to press 5 so that now I'm in my perspective view. Okay, so right now I'm going to apply a modifier to this curve. Now in my other tutorial, you have seen that I've used a mesh to create the profile instead. So this one is created, the profile of this uh, the vase or the container I'm going to create is done using a Bezier curve. So the modifier, screw modifier can also be applied onto this, uh, this profile. So I'm going to add the screw modifier right now. And you'll notice one thing, it is not spinning correctly. In fact, it's spinning in, this, uh, in the z-axis. Now we have to remember one thing, when we created the curve, it's lying on its side. So when we apply the uh, screw modifier, it is applying to the object's own local axis. Okay, so let me just uh, get rid of the screw modifier by clicking on this X here. And remember, this object's own local axis, if I change to local axis, is actually pointing this way as uh, shown by the manipulator. So if you want the modifier, now of course the screw modifier itself also allows you to change the axis until you get the shape that you want. But if you want the screw modifier to work straight away, you can just reset the rotational axis of this object. And to do that, you press Ctrl A and then you choose the option Rotation. So this forces the rotation to be aligned back to the whole world. And then now, if you apply the screw modifier, you get the correct vase shape. However, you notice that the color of the vase shape looks a bit odd. Whenever you see this type of uh, off gray color, that means the normals or the face, faces are facing the wrong way. 
Now if you go to the screw modifier, you'll notice that there's a flip option. Now you can click on flip and you'll notice that now the shading is now looking much more appropriate. Okay, there are several options that allows you to change the appearance or the uh, how many segments you want for this vase. So you can change the angle, of course, to open and close it to the angle is default, okay, 360, so I'm going to leave it at that. Then the number of steps, if you reduce the number of steps, you can change the number of segments that run around your vase. So I'm going to put it down to 16, okay, because I'm going to subdivide this later on. Okay, one thing you need to take note is that although now we have this vase object, it is actually still a Bezier curve object. So we need to convert it into a mesh object before we do anything to it. Because if we were to press the tab key right now, we can still adjust the curve and change the profile of our vase. So if I press 1 to go to the front view and press 5 to go to the orthographic view on my number pad, if I press Z to go to my uh, wireframe view, you can still select the control vertices and change the shape of your vase. So that is the added benefit of using uh, this method to create cylindrical objects. So once you're happy with this, I can press Z again to go back to shaded mode. Press 5 to go to my perspective view and middle mouse click and drag to change the camera angle. So once you're ready to convert it into a mesh, okay, so you can press Alt-C. Right? So make sure you're in the object mode. Press Alt-C. Okay, so we're still in the edit mode. I'm going to press tab to go to object mode. Okay, so right now I'm in object mode. Press Alt C. And then you choose the option mesh from curve. Okay, option. And now you have converted the curve object into a mesh object. Okay, so take note that there is a lot of segments here and it can make editing a little bit difficult. So I'm going to undo. I'm going to press tab. I'm going to press Ctrl Z a couple of times so that I'm back to the Bezier curve uh, mode again. Now, if you look at the properties panel here, you notice that there is a Bezier curve control here, right? And there is this preview U option available. Now, if I press Z in my viewport, okay, you notice the number of lines that cuts across this. Uh, vast is very fine that means there's a lot of lines so if you want to edit this for example if you want to add a handle by extrusion extruding the side later on this is too many faces to handle so under the resolution preview U, you can actually reduce it okay so you can reduce it to a low number like two and it still retains the shape okay and I know that in my screw setting in the modifier, I've given it 16 settings, or rather 16 segments. So right now, I can convert this into a vase. Now, if for some reason you still want to work on this model again, it will be a good idea simply just to duplicate this by pressing Shift D and then pressing X to lock in X axis. Duplicate another piece, okay? Apply the screw modifier, okay? Right now, I can't apply a screw modifier because this is not a mesh object because this is a Bezier curve. So I need to press Alt-C and convert it into a mesh object. And then you can see the screw modifier also disappears. Now, if I press Tab, you can see the number of faces on this vase is much more manageable and it's much easier to edit. For example, if I were to go to the face and I want to extrude to create a handle, I can easily do that. Okay, holding down the control and left mouse click. Okay, so I can easily do that. And if I press control 3, I can apply a smooth modifier or subdivision modifier. Okay, and you can see it still retains the original shape and profile that we started with. So this is how you use the Bezier uh, curves and the screw modifier to create cylindrical objects. Uh, I hope this tutorial is useful for you and please try this out.